Hi there! This week I am going to be extracting DNA from pigeon feathers to optimise our bird sexing workflow for pigeons. At the moment the bird sexing workflow works well for um, a range of different birds um, and I did get it to work for pigeons but they were from feathers that I'd plucked from a dead pigeon that I found by the roadside when I was on a bike ride. So a potential customer has very kindly um, plucked some breast feathers from his pigeons um, of known male and female gender. And I'm now running the workflow on those pigeons um, so that I can make sure that it works um, well before he starts using it to sex his own birds. So I'm going to start by extracting DNA from the feathers that he sent, um, very well labelled, and uh, then put them through the PCR and uh, show you the outcome. So I'm going to just um, cut up a feather on a close-up. So you don't need to see me and my face, you just need to be able to see the feather and I'll try to show you and explain to you a bit better what I'm trying to do to get the DNA from these feathers. So here's a bag full of feathers from our customer. Just gonna take a nice one out that looks like I'll be able to get some DNA from it. Oop, oof. Um, so, I don't know if you can see that very well on the camera. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to describe it to you. So at the end here, um, right at the tip, is where I would expect there to be some skin cells uh, if this has been plucked. So I'm going to cut off the very tip of this feather and include it in the extraction. But then there's also um, a bit further up, um, it sort of goes hollow for a bit, this feather. And then it um, goes opaque pake again, right at the base where the, the feather fluff starts. So I'm going to also remove a little section from the base of the feathers, because apparently there's um, like a blood clot at the base of the feather, which is good for extracting DNA from as well. So for this one, just to maximise my chances of getting the DNA, I'm going to uh, take the tip... There's always a danger with these that there's a little ping and what the bit that you want goes flying off. However, that didn't happen there. So I've got the edge there. Now I'm going to take out the hollow bit because, oh, and that, I don't know if you saw that, that just went pinging across my workbench. And now I'm going to take that base of the feather as well. There we go. I've got double chances there at getting DNA from this one. And then what's quite neat, is you can just use the very tip of the scalpel to transfer those in. Trying not to uh, breathe too hard on the feather and send it flying across your cutting mat. And there we have it, two tiny bits of feather. All right, now I've finished cutting up the feathers and they're already in the PCR tubes for the hotshot DNA extraction. So the next step is I'm going to add the um, alkaline lysis buffer to each of the tubes and then I'm going to put them on the Bento Lab heat block at 95 for 20 minutes. Um, then I will put the neutralizing buffer in. Um, I've shown you all this before on a previous vlog, so I'm not going to go through it again. I'll just give you a quick overview here. Uh, and then I'll come back to you when it's time to set up the PCR. I've set up all the samples in the master mix. So that contains the um, fire pole, water, primers and DNA. And now I'm going to run the PCR. The reason this one is um, customised for uh, pigeons is the primer mix that I've used, um, which is currently not available on our website, but hopefully will be if today goes well. <laughs> and this um, essential 
temperature here, this middle temperature in the PCR cycles, which is what we call the annealing temperature. Um, pigeons, for some reason, require a much lower annealing temperature in the PCR than other birds. For example, 55 degrees C is the most common temperature um, to use for avian sexing. But I've just lowered it to 48 here for the pigeons, um, 30 cycles. So I'm just going to set that running. Close the lid first. Set that running. And then come back to it in 113 minutes. So in the meantime, I'm going to set up my gel. Because of the way this um, PCR works, I'm going to set up a 3% gel, which is thicker than the ones I normally use. So it requires an extra agarose tablet. Just to explain a bit better what I was saying about the 3% gel in the previous video, um, because in this PCR, we're looking for there to be two bands for a female pigeon and one band to indicate a male pigeon. Uh, but the two bands for the female are very similar in size. And they're only about 20 base pair length difference. So by running a 3% gel for uh, an hour and a half at 50 volts, it means that the amplicons are spread out enough on the gel that you're able to see that size difference. And then you can tell very clearly um, which bird is male and which bird is female. So hopefully I'll be able to show you that next when this gel has finished running and we put it on the blue light. So fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, it didn't really work that well trying to show you on video the gel. So I've just taken a photo, uploaded it to my laptop and labelled it according to the gender of the pigeons that we were told by the owner who supplied the feathers. Um, so you can see here that there's a single band visible on the gel for the male pigeons um, and double bands visible for the two of the three female pigeons uh, for which the DNA amplified successfully and nothing in the negative control well which is great <laughs> um you can see at the top the bands in the right at the top of the wells actually is genomic dna so it does show that the dna extraction has been very successful for those samples this is quite a neat overview of what your gel should look like um, according to whether you have a male or a female bird I'd like to say thank you very much to our customer who sent the pigeon feathers for me to extract the DNA from and for letting me know what gender his pigeons were that the feathers are from um, that allowed me to get that PCR working and also thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.